Welcome to Focus on FCT, a program that keeps you up to speed with policies and programs of the FCT administration, all geared towards making Abuja take its rightful place in Committee of Nations. I am Mariam George Jitubo. Residents of the Federal Capital Territory are hereby allotted to the activities of scavengers, also known as Babambula, which security agencies have identified as a high-level security threat to not only the residents, but also to our infrastructure as they perpetrate petty stealing and acts of vandalism on public utilities. More so, they are drug peddlers, serve as spies to terrorist elements, and are ready-made tools for the public disturbances during which they attack people with dangerous weapons. The Federal Capital Territory Administration, therefore, reiterates that the ban on scavengers aka Bababula operating within the federal capital city is still in force. These miscreants are advised to stay off the streets of the federal capital city for their own good as defaulters will be apprehended and prosecuted, including parents of underage children involved in these practices. Relevant agencies are carrying out enforcement of this ban as stipulated. Be law abiding always. Let's together build the FCT of our dreams. Management announcer. The decision by the federal government in 2003 to embark on the computerization of the cadastral and land registry of the federal capital territory led to the establishment of the Abuja Geographic Information Systems, AGIS. The scheme has over the years been able to transform the whole operations of the land management and other related departments of the FCTA. In an interview, the director of the Abuja Geographic Information Systems, Dr. Isa Jalu, puts in perspective the core mandate of AGIS as it relates to land administration in the FCT. These and more after the break. Do stay with the program. I now have with me the Director of Abuja Geographic Information Systems, AGIS, and the person of Dr. Isa Jalu. Glad to have you join us on the program Focus on FCT. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for having me on your program. You're welcome. Let's begin by knowing what AGIS is all about. Thank you very much. Uh, AGIS, as we all know, is the common name that most people call this agency but it's an acronym for Abuja Geographic Information Systems. Uh, it is one of those uh, agencies that was created following the dissolution of the Ministry of the Federal Capital Territory. Uh, that gave birth to secretariats, agencies, and departments in 2004. Uh, this was given the mandate for the computerization of the cadastra, that's the survey record as well as the land records. GIS is a technology that is being used globally in the administration of land, especially as it relates to city management. And uh, the AGIS GIS infrastructure from inception is designed to provide that service. Um, Abuja is a world-class city in the making, and for the FCT administration to manage a world-class city globally, you need the GIS technology. So GIS provides you location information, and it provides you with a lot of data that you have in a container where you digitize, you gather data, you process, you analyze, and you get results. Results in terms of uh, city planning, you need such data. In terms of day-to-day -day administration of the land, you need it. In terms of security, you need such geospatial data. In terms of utility services, water, electricity, waste management, including demographic information, you also need such technology for taxation and, and so on, transportation as well. Uh, you can see a typical application of GIS technology in, in the Google that we use. Google map navigation is one of such. So in the FCT, AGIS was established at the beginning 
to computerize the record. So we need to bring in the baseline data. What is the baseline data? Is the data that has to do with the Abuja master plan. So it has to be in the records for the master plan has to be digitized fully so that you can see the location of all the roads, infrastructure fully digitized, uh, about the cadastra that shows the plots and the owners will have to be captured into the system. Now, once you get that done, then you can move on. For example, you have an allocation, you have your records fully captured in ages. Then you can go to development control, for example, department, where you go and apply for building plan approval. So that department would, re would require what? To confirm that you have a title. So they can now access this information and then they can grant you building plan approval. In the process of accessing such information, they also return some information back so that we get to know in the administration of land, the minister will get to know from our records that such land that he gave out had been granted building plan approval and so on. And the nature of the building can also be captured. And now to the mandate of the agency. As it is, as contained in the order, AGIS is given the mandate for the generation, management and administration of geospatial data infrastructure in the FCT. Now, spatial data is critical in land administration and in terms of management of the city. And so, AGIS was created specifically to ensure the management of the land records, as well as uh, also providing customer services in land administration in the FCT. And uh, this is what is contained in the, in the order. And since then, we have been operating under that mandate. Uh, however, along the line, uh, the other mandate of the land matters was uh, handed over by the handed over to the Department of Land Administration. That was in 2008. Was separated from ages with the mandate for allocation and issuance of title. However, those processes that had to do with allocation will have to go through ages uh, because data will have to be digitized in the ages records from other stakeholder departments. Uh, which are Department of Urban and Regional Planning. Uh, so they are mapping because they are under the uh, Federal Capital Development Authority. And Urban and Regional Planning is the custodian of the master plan and uh, is the department responsible for the development of the master plan as well as maintenance. So their data will have to be sent to ages for us to digitize. Like I said, before any allocation has been made, the data will have to be in our records. And so we also capture survey records. Uh, with the planning records and survey records, those are the data that are being provided, field data to us, which we digitize and make it available to the Department of Land Administration to do allocation. In addition, also, after allocation, you are expected to pay some fees. And so such fees are supposed to be captured, uh, paid in our records. So we collect the payment for such fees, statutory land fees, like the CO4 fees. And then following which you also get your CO4. So the CO4 will have to be processed. Now the processing of the CO4 is the responsibility of agents who process the CO4. And then the title deal plan will be signed by the director. So we are mapping. And then the Department of Land Administration will schedule your CO4 for the execution by the Home Minister, following which it will return back to us uh, for, for data capture. And again, the Land Department will issue you the CO4. Now, in terms of these processes, uh, you know, we, we work together with other departments. It's a stakeholder group to deliver services in land administration. Can you share with us your achievements over the years? Well, first and foremost, if we recall, before ages, the land records are being kept manually 
you know, in the register, and they were using typewriters. And then also the Soviet records are kept on intelligence sheets and so on. All that is gone now. If people will recall, a residents will recall on the fact that there was this exercise of recertification. Individuals were asked to bring their all CO4s for a new AGC CO4. In the process, we have been able to capture such records. And uh, the first thing we did, like I said earlier, is to capture into the AG system, which is a major achievement, the entire Abuja master plan, the road networks, the plot information, and so on, which are there in the records. So when you apply for the certification, we'll capture your records. So we have been able to achieve that as far as the city is concerned. We have captured all the records in the city. So this is a major achievement. Not only did we do that, we have been able to bring in a lot of revenue for the administration. The revenue that was being generated in the past was so small. But now it's revenue annually and running into billions of naira. And this is very important. We need revenue to manage the city. Uh, in addition, also, we, we have been able to run a system that is very transparent as well as land administration. There will be transparency. For example, you apply, you want to say, for example, buy a property. We c you can apply for a search in ages, and within 24 hours, we can tell you that that property exists and it is genuine. Now, this is a major achievement which was not available in the past, and that has brought a lot of uh, transparency and so on. Now, we also had captured some records from the area council. This is one record that is ongoing. And we're hoping that we are going to look at that also. Um, we also have been able to bring this information to other stakeholder departments. For example, development control that controls development. We have been able to achieve a lot in that direction. When the Abuja master plan was restored, AGIS has provided data, analyzed data for for, 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 the, for the restoration of the master plan. If there are encroachments on sewer system, by the time we lay this information, uh, we can we turn on the underground cadastral information, we can see the level of encroachment and so on. So this is very key in terms of uh, land administration. If you go into Google and you navigate, that data is because of the data that has been captured in ages. So that takes you to a house. So the street naming and house numbering was done by ages, if you recall, in phase one of the city. So this is also one major achievement, I would like to say. Now, like I said, over time, the institution well established. Staff have been trained. Initially, foreigners were managing the, the system, but uh, Nigerians took over since 2010. And over the years, we have been able to refine and improve the system Look, using the local capacity. The upgrades were done with the support, of course, of the uh, foreign technical partners, but was done in-house by our own staff. They carry out the physical upgrades, installations, and other things under the guidance of, of our foreign consultants. And they did very well. And uh, I'm happy to say the same technology is being used in other states of the Federation. So and uh, it has been bringing in a lot of money to other states as well. So this, I believe, is one major achievement, yes. Aside encroachment, what are those challenges the agency is being confronted with at the moment? Well, there are lots of challenges, you know, challenges come in in different fronts. One of those such challenges is the issue of power, which everybody is experiencing. You know, it's a technology agency that you have to run an IT infrastructure, and that infrastructure is high-end, enterprise class that requires constant power. And you have some servers you don't shut down 24 by 7, you know, seven days a week, eh? 12 calendar months, you have to keep the system running. So you need power, and that's why we had to use a hybrid system. 
which is uh, a solar based uh, public utility at the same time you need cooling so you need generators as well so the high cost of wealth is an issue when it comes to operation and then uh, when the public supply is not that good then you have high cost of maintenance you know and you know your budget is very tight nobody will envisage that uh, they throughout the year that the price will go like this so when you do budget it's based on the reality at that time but you know sometime last year everything went up so it was a challenge because the provision has been made what do you do so we are very lucky that we had to manage the system based on the on the solar technology and also sometimes delays in in budgets appropriation it takes some time like the this appropriation uh, fct came uh, 2022 came very late and so on so it is kind of difficult to operate when i'm hoping that the national assembly will address most of these issues you know and then another challenge is some professionals that we we hired and trained over time you know they leave us because they pay in npc or in the banks are better so by the time we train and they leave us so we have to bring again another set to continue to train and train you now have this platform to speak to fct residents how can they make your job easy well first they will make our job easy let them pay their statutory land fees because we need funding to run the agency so they must pay their ground rents very important because if you don't pay your ground rents you can lose your title that's the law has contained the land use act so they must pay their ground rent, which must is paid at the beginning of the year like we are expecting in advance as well for them to pay their 2023 there is now a ministerial committee to recover all outstanding ground rents and people are going to be taken to court government has provided services roads water waste management to your plot and you are not paying the statutory fees but this time around we are going to recover all and if you don't pay within the deadline then it means you are going to be taken to court thank you for gracing the program focus on fct thank you very much for having me on your program you're welcome sir That was quite educative and I do hope you are better enlightened on the mandate of the Abuja Geographic Information Systems, AGIS. Up next on the program is review of FCTA activities for the past week. The delegation was led by the FCT Resident Electoral Commissioner Yahya Bello, FCTA Permanent Secretary Olusha de Adeshola, who represented the Minister Disclosed that the Administration and the FCT INEC have enjoyed a worthwhile working relationship. He commends INEC for the preparations made so far ahead of the elections, as the Administration has continued to sensitize members of the public to the need for the collection of their permanent voter cards. We want to thank you for all the arrangements you, that have been put in place, and more importantly, that the FCTI neck under your watch is giving great support to the national INEC to ensure that the conduct of election in FCT actually is done with precision. The FCT INEC Resident Electoral Commissioner Yahya Bello says the visit is to acquaint the minister with the level of preparedness of the FCT INEC for the 2023 elections and to appreciate the minister for the support granted to the commission so far. The issue you know, uh, of logistics, this is as usual, we are still again you know, escalating the issue of logistics. To, you know, there is also issue of logistics in order to conduct a, a election. He also assures the minister of the preparedness of INEC to successfully conduct the election, saying the underperformance of the Beavers machine during the FCT area council elections had led to the improvements being made on the equipment. Security threats associated with the point-of-sale operation business inform this new directive. 
Coordinator Abuja Metropolitan Management Council, Omar Shwaibu, says FCT administration is not against POS business, but operating along the road and causing nuisance violates the environmental rules and regulations. We have challenges because these POS operators are not operating in an area where they're supposed to operate according to the uh, provision of the master plan. So it's a commercial service to the people that are supposed to be within commercial areas. We have commercial complexes, we have plazas, we have markets, we have supermarkets, we have filling stations. All these ones are areas for commercial activities in which the POS operators are supposed to liaise with the owners of these properties and place their services. Anybody that has come for any commercial transaction that needs money, they are there to provide for him. That is the international based practice. All POS operators should leave People's Gate, leave Street Junction, leave roadside and go to commercial areas. The city manager say there are a series of complaints by residents against the POS operators doing business within their premises. Stand by for our sanitation watch for this week. It was one outing in a series of commitments to rid the federal capital city of the menace of commercial motorcycles with the tax team vowing to effectively deliver on its mandate. Area 1 roundabout played host to the crushing exercise monitored by the task team. A breach of the transportation master plan of the FCT minister gave a matching order that all of these illegalities, that's why you could see that the army, the navy, the air force, all are joined the DRTS director and myself to actually clear the city of the menace of a commercial motorcycle. We've packed so much of them. We are crushing them today and we'll keep crushing them. As we all know, the menace of um, motorcyclists in Abuja, they assist kidnappers, assist bandits. So we have, we are determined to assist other security agencies, particularly the the Directorate of Road Traffic Services to ensure that the F, the Federal Capital City, is rid of the menace of motorcyclists. The minister have warned and directed severally that the Okada riders should be off the city because of the security implication of their operations. We can confidently say that statistics available to us have revealed that there's a drastic reduction in road traffic crashes as it relates to the use of. I want to commend the effort of government for being consistent as far as this enforcement is concerned. From the number of uh, enforcement we have carried out, we have substantially reduced the number of uh, commercial Okada riders in the federal capital city. But it seems that the effort would still have to you know, be on. We are going to do our spreading so that we don't have to move all together. So from any command, anywhere, that motorcycles are seen flying in the wrong routes, they will have to be impounded. The law enforcers promised to comb other locations within its area of coverage to arrest recalcitrant motorcycle operators. I wish to reiterate that the FCT remains safe and, our confidence, and we have our confidence in the ability of the security agencies to provide adequate security uh, day and night. And from what we have seen in the immediate past, a lot of successes have been recorded and I believe they will continue to be recorded, particularly with the provision of these vehicles. This is where we wrap up this week's episode of the program. Keep a date with us next week, same time, same station. Be vigilant and report suspicious activities around you. Bye.